The following Bloodstream Media podcast is made possible by Tremo Pharmaceuticals and is intended for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only. Please speak with medical professionals before making healthcare decisions. We can mask it, we can disguise it, we can function beautifully, but it's still there. You are afraid right now because you live with pain and your fear is causing you to stop doing the things that you love. It requires acceptance over and over again. It's completely different when you have someone who empathizes and and truly understands what you're going through. My life has value. My life, even with pain, I am an integral part of society. There's this iconic image from the 1993 movie Groundhog Day starring Bill Murray of an alarm clock going off at 6 in the morning. We then see Bill Murray in bed staring at the ceiling with no desire to start the day. The image of the alarm clock is seen over and over and over and over and... Okay, you get where this is going. We see it a lot. I think about this image almost every time I wake up in the morning. Although the movie's plot is quite different from real life, that image, that moment, is so relatable. Hi, I'm Mel Forrest, and you're listening to The Pain Pod. So I'd I'd wake up in the morning and the first thing that I notice usually is waking up early in the morning is hard, so I'd have to stay in bed for a while. For the morning people out there, I tip my hat to you. Still, I think it's safe to say that most people have at once experienced a moment like this. That desire to hit the snooze button 20 more times and say, you know what, not today, I'm going to break from the routine and just finally relax for once. But what if you couldn't hit the snooze button? What if you had to endure and endure? Chronic pain doesn't sleep in. It doesn't hit snooze 20 times. And as many know, it rarely takes a day off. It can be exhausting, not just physically, but also mentally. Living life with pain involves thinking about daily life differently. Pain management needs to be considered. Routines get changed and modified. Exhaustion sets in and suddenly, that snooze button is looking pretty enticing. In this episode, we discuss daily routines, pain management, and the new normal of living with chronic pain. The temperature rises a bit to say maybe the sun comes out and it's just a bit hotter, then then I step out. I'd go to shower, which wasn't very available all the time. This is Isaac, a severe hemophilia A patient from Kenya who lives with arthritis and chronic joint pain. At the time, I lived with my daughter and her mom. So from the moment I step out of the bed, I just forget myself and it's everyone else. If I need to go to work, I I wouldn't always go to work because I, I have to work from home for the most part. So whenever I had to go out to work, I live in a sort of valley. I have to go up a really sort of steep hill to go to where the public transportation is. Matatus are privately owned minibuses that serve as a form of public transportation in Kenya. So I had to, to do that. that. That was every day, that was like the biggest challenge for me. Sometimes growing up in Nairobi and, and in the part of Nairobi that I grew up in, the Matatus won't stop for you if you're a, a guy, like a young man. They, they really, they, they won't. Like, it just keep going, you have to to chase it and hop on. And when I get to where I'm going, they won't also stop. So I just have to to hop off it while it's moving. You know, I thought I moved to a different part of town. I thought it would be different. (laughs) It's exactly the same. How the matatus are organized inside is really not friendly for a person living with hemophilia. Sometimes there is no leg room for the space you have available. They've organized it in a way that's not very friendly. So when someone passes by, they might hit me. So I've gotten several bleeds in a matatu. That has happened a couple of times to me. So now I'm dealing with a bleed as I go where I'm going. Chronic pain can influence a person's daily choices. For Isaac, the simple task of commuting to work can significantly affect the outcome of his day. Usually I'll go to a coffee shop if, it's, if I'm meeting with a client or a friend. 
I, I have been in situations where I've sat down in a restaurant and when I was standing up, I, I couldn't stand and I had to call someone to bring me crutches to help me get to, to, to like in a cab or something. Maybe you're asking why I don't always take a cab. It's not always affordable for me. Venting, unloading, or just letting out the frustrations of the day to a person you trust can be cathartic. Finding a space to decompress can positively impact a person's well-being. But having access to this is not always available, and sometimes you just want to talk to someone who understands. I've had this conversation as well with other people with hemophilia. What we've all noticed is that it's never the best idea to tell someone else what's going on, especially someone who's very close to you, because they take it upon themselves and they have no idea what to do from there. Sometimes it's a lot for them to take in as well. I think if, if you don't have the pain and you haven't studied about the pain, you don't understand how it's like. There is a lot of adjustment, so I have to almost deliberately hide a lot of the things that are going on with me so that it doesn't affect someone else in, in the same way. Pain management can be a daily practice. For April, having multiple chronic pain conditions including fibromyalgia, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic migraines and chronic back pain means varying up her daily routines and her daily pain management. It is day to day. I definitely think that it's day to day because I'll, I'll be fine for a while and then I'll end up having a flare. Usually at that point, I'm getting on the phone, like which doc can see me first? Can my rheumatologist see me? No, okay, it's gonna be a month. Let's call the pain management doc and see what they think. So pain management, they've been great, but really it's all temporary. They can do injections in my neck for migraines and injections in my low back when that's bugging me. But it's not a definitive thing. I go and they're like, okay, we'll see you back in two weeks for some more injections. And each one of those, that's a day out of work because it's painful. So it's supposed to target the nerve where the pain is coming from. And so it numbs the nerve to trick the brain into thinking you're not in pain. And so what I always tell all my docs is, okay, cool, it's a Band-Aid, but it doesn't take it away. So that's kind of hard because it is really just a day-to-day -day thing. If I'm dealing with pain, I could just lay in bed and, and <laughs> live my life that way. But really, ultimately, I want my kids to have a better life than what I had. and. I don't want them to go through the suffering and stuff that I've gone through. Managing a daily routine can be exhausting and tedious, but for some, it can also be a form of taking control of the pain and ultimately their life. And so after that, I just felt like I was able to take control back of my life. We'll explore more daily routines and the new normal after this word about our sponsor. The Pain Pod is produced by Bloodstream Media and made possible thanks to our sponsor, Tremo Pharmaceuticals. Hi, my name is Chris Finale. I work for Tremo Pharmaceuticals and I'm the head of business operations there. I was curious to know from Chris what the head of business operations did at Tremo. That is a fantastic question. I could tell Chris and I were going to get along very well. I am in charge of the day to day operations human relations and finance department, and just making sure that the daily operations run smoothly. Earlier in his career, Chris had a job at another company with an interest in pain, but it wasn't until pain impacted a family member that Chris really started to understand. My brother-in-law had a head injury and got treated for pain with that and was prescribed opioids and fell into an addictive situation. So that's where everything really hit home. While patients may never know their names, Chris wants them to know that there are people out there who are working for them and who really care. There are companies out there trying to help patients with pain. There's other people that they don't even know at these companies that are focusing on treatments for pain that are really working hard to try and find something that is going to help them in their daily lives so they can try and get back to some semblance of what a normal life would look like for them. Hopefully it gives them a little bit of hope. 
Tremo was founded with the goal of developing and delivering non-opioid pain therapies for people with rare diseases and other carefully selected pain conditions. Tremo is currently conducting a phase three clinical trial for its lead product, a COX-2 selective NSAID. NSAID, for those who aren't familiar, stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. While this treatment is not FDA approved, you can learn more about Tremo's pipeline, mission, and the dedicated team working alongside Chris by going to tremorx.com. That's T-R-E-M-E-A-U-R-X.com. Tremo, leading the way for those left behind in pain. Just living in this new normal of chronic pain. In 2014, Shannon Green was diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome, where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks part of its peripheral nervous system. The first year that I had Guillain-Barre in 2014, I felt like I missed that whole year of my life. It was really challenging because I couldn't cook or clean or do anything. So the whole dynamic of our household had to change. And then I got really depressed. And then in 2015, I finally got up and just started moving as much as I could. And I tell people that are dealing with chronic pain, the worst thing you can do is lay in bed and not move. So I just force myself to move even when I don't feel like it. As we discussed earlier, Daily decision-making can be exhausting and tedious, but it can also empower a person. By making choices, a person can control the pain and not allow it to dictate their life. Well, I get up early and I try to walk with my husband and my puppies. After I've had my coffee, I will go and do that. The dogs have helped get me up even when I don't feel like it. They get bored laying around and they'll tell me they want to go outside. They've been a good encouragement. In the mornings, I work on Instagram for my book promotion. So my book came out June 1st. Shannon's book is titled Chronic Pain Hacker Because Healing is Hard. And so I self-publish, so I am on my own, but I try to answer people's questions. I'm in some groups, non-epileptic seizures group and Guillain-Barre groups, and I answer the members' questions. So I do that every morning. So I just feel like that's my way of giving back. The first year or so, I felt like I was a burden to my family and I couldn't do what I used to do. And now I do it, I just do it differently. We all find ways to get by, and sometimes the routines we've become used to no longer serve us. Change can be good and is often necessary, but adjusting to a new normal, well, that can take some time. You know, I, I'm a busy woman and stopping to do mindfulness is not on my list and it should be. This is Cassandra. She suffers from chronic neck and back pain. My kids are older now. I'll be an empty nester one day, <laughs> hopefully sooner, right? But you know, I have to remember that putting myself towards the top of the list is not a bad thing. There's so many aspects to how I manage my pain. I've gone to physical therapy a gazillion times. I've had the opportunity to have a good uh, PT in the past and have learned some really good stretches, some really good positions and exercises to do. And I do those often, like practically every day, if I'm having pain or not. It's just a good maintenance thing for me. Trying to be active is another thing. For my mental state especially, I try really hard to do mindfulness techniques. I'm not as good about it every day as I want to be, but that is something that really does help after my second surgery, I could not get ahead with the medications. I mean, it was awful. It was just an awful, awful 24 hours after. And the thing that helped me get through it were some mindfulness uh, meditations, 
that Michelle Duvall from the uh, Mindful Center in Albuquerque had, and I used my essential oils. I mean, I know that they're not like this mysterious thing or anything, but just to calm me and to try to get my anxiety levels down so that I could get the pain to where I could bear it because it was out, I was out of my mind and the medicine wouldn't even help. Ever since then, I'm like, this stuff really works. There's something about this mindfulness meditation that really, really does work. Meditation is one approach to pain management, but not the only approach. You know, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, I see a pain doctor. There's two of them, the the doctor and then the, the physician's assistant who does the medication. And so I go every three months and I get injections, you know, in my neck and in my back to help. Sometimes they last for a week. Sometimes they don't help at all. It just depends to get a little relief when I can. But the medication, this is what I hate, but it's where I'm at right now. Every four hours I'm taking hydrocodone, a pretty big dose, but you would never know it because I function really well. But I'm at the cusp right now of having to get off of that and probably go to something like oxycodone because it's not working like it should. The thing is with medications, with surgery, it's better, but it's not great. So, you know, I have to rely on medication. If I can practice what I preach about taking care of ourselves and taking care of me, I know I can handle this pain, but it's not an easy thing. Every day is a new day. And that day may look different than the one before or even the one before that. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's also okay to feel good. Living a daily existence with chronic pain is not easy, but know that you have worth and however you choose to show up each day is enough, even if you decide to hit that snooze button. Our mental health has to be top priority because if we can't get in a good space with our mental health, how in the world are we gonna take care of our physical being? Next time, we talk chronic pain, mental health, and depression on Episode 5 of The Pain Pod. The Pain Podcast is written and hosted by me, Mel Forrest. Produced and edited by Greg Holdsman. Artwork by Ryan Geelan and Christina Newhart. Post-production support from Joshua Sterling Bragg, Rob Bradford, and Ava Friedman and executive produced by Patrick James Lynch. The Pain Pod is produced by Bloodstream Media and presented by Tremo Pharmaceuticals. Learn more about Tremo and the work they're doing to help alleviate pain by visiting T-R-E-M-E-A-U-R-X.com. And as always, if you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and share The Pain Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Mel Forrest, and we'll be back next time with episode five of The Pain Pod.